I already told you guys the notation for your sequences. What is a sequence? A list of numbers, correct? And in general, or at least in my other video, when I introduced them, you have a 1, a 2, a 3, all the way to a n, or it continues. So a 1 represents the first term in your sequence, a 2 is the second term, a 3 is the third term, just a really quick recap. A n is called the nth term, which can be represented by a formula. And then it could be an infinite sequence, so it could continue after that also. So it could be finite, which means it would end at the nth term. Or it could be infinite, which means it would continue forever. So these are examples of, um, actually this one is an example of an nth term in terms of a formula, which is an explicit form. So this is an explicit form of a sequence, a formula that represents a sequence. And you're asked to find, let's say sometimes you're asked to find the first six terms. I'm just going to do the first four terms of this explicit um, series, uh, sorry, sequence, not series, different. So to find the first term, the subscript is 1. I'm replacing n with 1, which represents term 1. A1 is the first term. And everywhere that I see an n, because n represents the term number, I'm going to replace it with a 1. And then simplify. Negative 1 to the second is positive 1. Over 2, so the 1 is 2 minus 1, which is 1. So the first term of this sequence, I'm going to do it up here, starts with the number 1. To get to the second term, I'm going to have space for all three of these on here. Let's see. For the second term, I'm going to replace n with the number 2. So everywhere I see an n, I'm going to replace it with the number 2 because n represents the term number. So if I want the second term, I'm going to replace it with 2. Negative 1 to the third is negative 1 over 2 oops, to the, what am I replacing n with? I'm replacing it with 2, right? I want the second term, 2 to the second, which is 4 minus 1, which is 3. So negative 1 third is the second term of this particular sequence. To find the third term, I'm replacing n with 3 everywhere in this formula. 2 plus 1 over 2 to the third minus 1. So negative 1 to the fourth power is positive 1. 2 to the third is 8 minus 1 is 7. So 1 7 is the third term of this particular sequence. And last but not least, the fourth term. Obviously, I can go on forever if I want to, but I'm only going to do the first four terms. Negative 1 to the fifth is negative 1. 2 to the fourth is 16 minus 1 is 15. So negative 1 over 15 is the fourth term of this. And I'm going to put dot, dot, dot to indicate that this will continue. These are just the first four terms. Now, um, if, you do, you, if you do get to Calc 2, you'll notice this is an alternating series because the signs alternate. So I go from positive to negative to positive to negative, or I could start with negative, positive, negative. When the signs alternate like that, you can kind of consider it an alternating series, uh, alternating sequence, which you'll learn later on. Um, but it's a special type of situation, which you see this negative one to some exponent. That indicates the sign's going to change per term. Um, so this is explicit form. An explicit form is nice, because you can directly plug in the term number. So if I want the hundredth term, I could just replace n with 100 and find the hundredth term. So with the explicit form of a sequence, it's nice because I could find any term number that I want at any point in time. So um, all I have to do is replace n with whatever term number that I want. Now, um, um, when it comes to the second form that I, um, do in here, I'm doing here, this to another page. I'll come back to this one. This one, you'll notice, or at least I hope you can notice, that I'm given the first term. A1 is 5. I'm given the first term. And then it says after that, An, the nth term, is equivalent to 3 times a n minus 1 minus 1. This is a subscript. So this is um, recursive form. Recursive form of a sequence in you know, formula form. Recursive instead of explicit. This is recursive form. 
because I can't, let's say, if I want to find the hundredth term, I'm not going to be able to find that unless I have a previous term. So look at this. I'm given A1, which is 5. So let's write the first four terms over here. So the first term is 5. Awesome, I'm given the first term. How do I find the second term? I'm going to replace N with 2. I'm going to replace N with 2. So let me copy the rest of this down. 3 times A, I'm going to replace N with 2, subscript 2 minus 1, and then minus 1. This is on the same level. This is the subscript. Don't confuse the two. Notice what happens. I have 3 times, simplifying this, A1 minus 1. This means that I need the first term multiplied by 3 and then subtracting 1 in order to find the second term. The second term is dependent on what I know about the first term. So if I did not know the first term, I could not find the second term. This is a recursive form of these type of formulas to find an nth term. So in recursive form, the problem with it is I can't find if I want the hundredth term, I won't be able to find the hundredth term unless I have the previous term, if I'm given this form. Three times A1, so I was given the first term, which means I can continue to move forward. 15 minus one is 14. So the second term for this particular sequence is 14. The third term, notice, everywhere I see an N, I'm replacing it with 3 because I want the third term. So this says 3 times a subscript 2 minus 1. This means I need the second term to do the third term. I need 3 times the second term and then minus 1. So what's 14 to 42? 42 minus 1 or 41. So 41 is my third term of this particular sequence which was given to me in recursive form. So let's do one more fourth term, A4. Sometimes, typically you're asked to find the first six terms, but obviously it's pretty repetitive. You can do it if you do the first four terms. So I want to do three times A to the subscript four minus one because I'm replacing N with four because I want the fourth term. So three simplifying this becomes three A3 minus one. So this is the third term. I need the third term to find the fourth term because I started in recursive form. Oops, minus one. And so now I have three times 41 is what? 123 minus one, so 122. So 122 is my fourth term of this, um, what do you call it? Of this particular sequence, dot, 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 it will continue. Here is the sequence. Um, which started in recursive form. So explicit form, I like personally because I can find any term number that I want. All I have to do is replace n with whatever term that I want, which with, or whatever term number I want. Recursive form I need to know also because sometimes it's easier to represent a sequence in recursive form than it is in explicit form because you have to find a general situation for this one. Here, you know, it's a lot easier to write these formulas, but obviously they're limited. Um, there's a reason why I wanted to do this one. The reason is because I have a factorial symbol and I want you know, to know factorial because you're going to see it a lot if um, you go into calc 2. And you'll see it a lot here. You see it a lot in sequences. This says, if you can't see it, if it's blurry, a n is equal to n plus 1, the quantity factorial over n squared. So this exclamation point is called a factorial symbol. And what it means is, so for example, if I have 5 factorial, that tells me that I have to take the product of 5 and every integer below 5, uh, I should say every whole number, no, I should say every counting number, um, below 5, decreasing by 1 down to 1, right? Not including 0 because I'm not going to make this 0. So anything factorial is the product of that number and then decrease by 1 all the way down to 1 and take the product. So if I have n factorial, that is n times 1 less than n, which is n minus 1, times 1 less than that, n minus 1 minus 1, or n minus 2, times all the way down to 1. This one, this n plus 1 factorial, is equal to n plus 1 times 1 less than that would be n, 1 less than that would be n minus 1. 1 less than that would be n minus 2. 
and then blah, 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 all the way down to one. Sometimes you're asked to simplify situations with this, and I'll show you that next. But let's just find, maybe I'll just do the first couple of terms of this one. But let's find the first term, and this is explicit form again, because if I want the hundredth term, all I have to do is plug in 100 and the end, and I can find it. So this is an explicit form. But let's just find the first term. Everywhere I see an n, I'm going to replace it with a 1, and then simplify. 1 plus 1 is 2 factorial, so I do in the parentheses first, divided by 1. And 2 factorial is 2 times 1, which is 2. So the first term of the sequence, I'll write it over here, is 2. Second term, a2. Everywhere I see an n, I'm going to replace it with 2. So I have 2 plus 1, which is 3, then factorial, then over 2 squared, which is 4, and 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6, which simplifies 3 halves, and then that is the second term of this particular sequence. I'll do one more, for that space for one more. 3 plus 1, then factorial, then over 3 squared is 4 factorial, then over 9, and 4 factorial, don't forget, is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and this is 12 times 2, which is 24, divided by 9, which can be simplified because 3 goes into both of those, 8 thirds, and then blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this continues. I just wanted to show you factorial. Um, one more reason why I want to show you factorial is sometimes you're asked to simplify things like this. So I'm going to do one of these. Simplify, you know, this situation. You're going to need this later on in Calc 2. So I want to at least introduce it. Um, well, n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times 1 less than that, n, times 1 less than that, n minus 1, times 1 less than that, n minus 2, times 1 less than that. I'm not going to do it forever, all the way down to 1. That's the representation. That is what n plus 1 factorial is equal to. And minus 1 factorial starts with n minus 1 times 1 less than that, n minus 1 minus 1, n minus 2, times n minus 3, times n minus 4, all the way down to 1. And the thing about these is if you notice, you have a product on top of a fraction and a product on the bottom. And within the top, you have stuff that will cancel, right? All of these n minus 1 down, the n minus 1 factorial is within the n plus 1 factorial. So it's, it will cancel, and it's going to simplify to whatever's left on top, which is just n plus 1 times n. So this is the simplification of this. Um, you'll see this later. You could do it with basic situations too, for example, you know, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is And then 3 times 2 times 1, you'll see that 3 factorial is within 5 factorial, so it will cancel, and this will become whatever's left. So whatever's left is everything on top of this 3 factorial, so the 5 and the 4, which is 20. Okay, so you'll see both of these situations with factorial symbols. We'll come back to this too when we get to that, but it definitely count too. And if we do mathematical induction, we'll see this later also. Um, so I just wanted to at least show it here now and then um, we'll see it again later.